trash. <laughs> trash. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Gwen and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little different. So I'm excited. I'm going to be watching some of my old YouTube videos, specifically some that some some that were more popular or yeah, I'm just going to like look at some of my old popular natural hair videos and look and see if I um, use any of the same tips or tricks that I used in the past, like the same um, products or just kind of, you know, let's all just cringe at my old content. So I think it'll be fun. <laughs> so I really hope you enjoy this video. If you do, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Also be sure to turn on all your notifications and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at SoNaturallyGwen. All right, let's get started. Squirrel. Okay, let's get started. So um, I'm going to be, I think, I don't know. I've never done one of these videos, but I do love, I think I want to sit this way. Okay, we're going to sit this way. I'll take this pillow from my back. And so I'm going to have the video like right here on my screen. And what I'm going to do is screen record on my iPad. Okay, so I'm opening up YouTube now. So I have a popular videos tab in case you ever want to watch, but let's click on my most popular video, which is my no protein, no coconut oil wash day routine. And it's five years old. I'm excited. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Gwen and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be bringing you a wash day routine. Let's get started. Okay, before I get started into the wash day routine, I'm gonna give you some background on my hair. I am one year heatless, so one year transitioning basically. And I also recently recovered from protein overload. Protein overload is basically when the balance between moisture and protein in our hair, either too much moisture or too much protein, um, can cause a problem and for me it was too much protein. Basically that was caused by coconut oil. Coconut oil prevents protein loss from your hair so I in my case I had protein in the conditioner that I was using and then I had the coconut oil mixed in there so it kept that protein in the hair. In my hair. Okay. First of all <laughs> it was really hard to find a location where I it was really hard to find a time in the video where I was pausing. So first of all the color I was definitely more colorful back then I love I love this look honestly um, I remember I put the purple lipstick on and I wanted to create an ombre and I didn't have a dark purple lip liner so I took some dark blue eyeshadow and used it to make a gradient on the sides of my lips and I really liked how it turned out also these lashes with this purple look what are my eyebrows doing that's that's the first question I don't know what my eyebrows were doing anyways um yeah I look really cute in this video honestly I love how I look um I messed my little purple room I was just create in there I still have those mirrors that are on that wall but they're used somewhere else anyways <clears throat> so I said a lot in this video already so at this point I had just gotten over protein overload this was a huge turning point in my natural hair um, journey. I learned that, you know, protein can be bad for your hair and that I need to, you know, kind of watch it in some way. And then even since then, I have been having a journey with protein, trying to figure out how to balance it in my hair. By the time that I posted this video, I have made a updated protein moisture balance video, which I will link on your screen as well as in the description box in case you are interested. But yeah, so I, have always had an issue with protein, just trying to figure out how to use it and how often my hair needs it and what's too much, what's not enough, just all the things surrounding the topic of protein. I've been always trying to figure that out. So yes, it is true. Protein overload can happen when you have too much protein compared to moisture in your hair. And while protein is helpful for the hair because it prevents breakage, too much protein can make your hair too brittle and too like loaded with protein to where your hair is not able to you know be elastic and have those good benefits of being moisturized 
so it can just dry your hair out and make it feel really brittle and break off so it is really important to make sure that you have uh oh did my screen recording end then let's try this again so yes back to what i was doing so yeah having too much protein in your hair like i said can make your hair brittle and coconut oil is a protein like oil so there are oils that act like protein and other ingredients that kind of act as proteins and coconut oil is one of those ingredients where it holds on to the protein in your hair and it makes it so that your hair is less likely to lose protein now this is very good if your hair is damaged but i've <laughs> 2016 was definitely the year of the coconut oil everyone was obsessed with it me included i just felt like you pour coconut oil over your life and everything just like you know go <laughs> goes well so coconut oil holds on to the protein in your hair and makes it less likely to leave so too much protein in a product that you leave in for too long that's what i did i was i left the deep conditioner in for like an hour i think and it had coconut oil in it and it was just a mess so that's what ended up happening I was transitioning and as you transition your hair is less and less damaged and so because your hair is less and less damaged you don't need as much protein so it's not necessary to go in with reconstructors and you know very strong protein treatments that are for very damaged hair because your hair isn't damaged anymore and I also struggle with that at this time now because I'm trying to figure out how to use protein treatments but it looks like I don't need a full on protein treatment I just need something that has protein in it so that's what I do now but anyways yes so I agree with everything that I've said so far I don't see anything wrong and I love my little makeup look with the purple it's really cute so let's keep going and let's see what past me has to say more about the topic of no protein no coconut oil it was like really really brittle and it was just like dry and matted together and yeah it was really really bad and even using my moisturizing products afterwards trying to get the moisture back in my hair it wasn't helping and i soon learned that my products that i was using every single day also had protein in them so yeah i was forced to you know revise my regimen and make it a protein free regimen and also coconut oil free regimen so that's what i'll be showing you today and the ingredients that I am avoiding is proteins, duh. So anything that says proteins or has amino acids in it. Also sea kelp extract, aloe vera, jojoba oil, and avocado oil. These ingredients also have some protein in it. And I'm also avoiding oils that act like protein, which is what coconut oil is. So yeah, that's some back oil. These in just wanna go back to this list. So going back to this list, I was talking about proteins and just you know other ingredients that act like proteins that I'll be avoiding I do agree with most of this list I do not agree with the aloe vera jojoba oil and avocado oil those I don't agree with because aloe is actually moisturizing and it's a humectant so um, it adds moisture to your hair so I see what I was saying as far as it like being a plant and you know being plant-based however aloe is moisturizing so I no longer avoid aloe Jojoba oil, I honestly, jojoba oil, jojoba oil is actually an oil that is the most like our natural sebum that comes out of our scalp. So it's the most like our natural oils that are on our hair. Also, I don't know if jojoba oil actually does have protein in it. Like, I think I did research at the time and it did show that. However, I've never used jojoba oil. So first of all, this this <laughs> this screenshot right here, that's that's not cute. Anyway, um yeah, no, so um I've never used jojoba oil actually like on its own, so I can't say how it reacts to my hair, but I can see what I was going with like trying to be like extra careful, but now I don't really notice, you know, the effects of jojoba oil. Like a lot of products will just have random oils in it, so I don't really pay attention to the jojoba oil. And then the avocado oil, I can also see why I would think that because avocados do have protein in them. And so, yeah, I don't, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever really noticed avocado oil in products, but I can see why I would avoid the avocado oil. But basically, if a product has aloe vera in it, jojoba oil or avocado oil, I'm not going to avoid it just because I'm worried about proteins. Um, also, amino acids, I can see, again, why I would 
want to avoid that because amino acids are made up in proteins like amino acids are proteins they're the building blocks of proteins so i can see why i would avoid them but actually amino acids they don't last as long in my hair so i use amino acid containing products in like refreshing sprays or anything that i'm using to refresh my hair throughout the week because it's um you know time to re-moisturize i will go in with something with amino acids in it just to give me a little bit of protein so i don't go too much towards the moisture side of protein moisture balance in my hair so i do agree with this list i do use coconut oil not straight coconut oil but i do you know use products that contain coconut oil and i don't seem to have an issue with it so that is my thoughts on that list i feel like i said that in a very long way but i could have said that um a lot of shorter way but anyways so yes um Pretty much the bottom half of the list I don't avoid. The top half of the list I don't mind using. I just, like I said, use it for certain purposes and not as often. Ingredients also have some protein in it and I'm also avoiding oils that act like protein which is what coconut oil is. So yeah, that's some background on my hair but let's get started into the wash day routine. Okay, so the first step that I have in my wash day routine is pre-pooing. Pre-pooing is when you apply oil to your hair before shampooing and conditioning your hair. Pre-pooing helps with detangling, it boosts the conditioning process, and it protects the hair from the harsh shampooing process. For this step, you can use any oil that you'd like, but me personally, I use extra virgin olive oil. And the benefits of using olive oil is it's going to help prevent frizz, it's going to prevent dandruff, and it's going to protect my hair from damage. The oil penetrates my hair. I'm sorry, I'm about to cry. Look at how short my hair was. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, I'm about to cry. No, but um, I do agree with this. I don't always pre-poo. I used to pre-poo every wash day and I noticed that it is necessary for shampooing days, but for co-wash days, it's really not necessary. Um, I co-wash every week and then I shampoo once a month. So when I do shampoo, I have to force myself to pre-poo because it, it is an extra step. You know, it's an extra step but I do pre-poo when it comes to shampooing my hair, but it's not necessary with co-washing. I actually discourage pre-pooing, especially with oils before co-washing because it can cause buildup and your hair is going to be two way down and it's just, you know, gonna be really heavy and just built up. So that can affect like, you know, your scalp health and things like that. So that's something I don't recommend, but um, I do still pre-poo some weeks slightly and some of it will be left behind after shampooing and it will prevent that stripped feeling that I usually get when I use shampoo. And when using oil for the purpose of conditioning, it's always applied to dry hair so that there's no water there to repel it. Oil and water don't mix, so if the hair is wet, it's gonna be hard for the oil to penetrate the hair shaft. So once I've applied the olive oil to my hair, I just cover it with a plastic bag and I leave it on for about an hour. And you can also heat up the oil beforehand in order to make it a hot oil treatment. So after pre-pooing, it's time to get in the shower and to shampoo my hair. So first I rinse my hair with hot water and the hot water is gonna help start to remove dirt, oil, and build up from my hair. The shampoo I'm currently using is the Cantu Shea Butter Sulfate-Free Cleansing Cream Shampoo. This is what it looks like. Trash. <laughs> Trash. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm being so rude about that. No, the shampoo was so drying on my hair and I was using it for years just because I was like, well, it like shampoo's drying. So I guess I can just use this one. No, there's so many other shampoos out there that don't cause your hair to be dry. Now, if you're using it a lot, it's going to make your hair dry. But if you don't use it as often as, you know, every week, like I do, like I space out my shampooing and you find one that doesn't completely strip your hair. You should be fine and you shouldn't have to worry about your hair being super, super dry afterwards. So yes, I don't recommend that shampoo, but um, I do like the conditioner from that line, which I will probably talk about. So yes, no to that shampoo. So I don't use that anymore. This is what I use currently. There are some shampoos out there that have uh, proteins in them, but this line specifically doesn't have protein in it. So this is the line that I currently use for my shampoo. It is a cream shampoo, so it's not a clarifying shampoo, which is perfect for protein overloaded hair, so it can help bring moisture back into the hair. 
So I apply the shampoo and I focus it on my scalp and I massage it into my scalp. And you wanna just use the pads of your fingers, like the, your, your fingertips, you don't wanna scratch your hair because scratching your hair can create little cuts in your scalp and it can help inhibit or slow hair growth. But it also can irritate your scalp if you scratch it too much. So you just wanna use your fingertips and really massage it into your scalp. And for, yeah, I think I, I should have clarified when I made this video. So basically when your scalp is irritated, your body is dealing with the process of inflammation. And so when your body is dealing with inflammation, it's going to focus on that acute process and it's not going to focus on something like hair growth, which is something that happens when your body is not dealing with any type of stress. In time of stress, your body is not going to be worried about growing long hair. It's going to be worried about, you know, monitoring any type of acute process like an injury, so scratching your scalp or, you know, inflammation is an injury in itself. So yes. So you don't want to scratch your hair too much be just because it can irritate your scalp and prevent hair growth because your body's not going to be as focused on growing your hair. Me personally, my hair is very thin and it's fine. So I don't get crazy buildup to begin with. So I don't need a very strong shampoo to use in my hair based on my experience with my hair. Even though the Cantu shampoo is a moisturizing shampoo, it's more than enough to get my hair feeling nice and clean. So it does enough job of clarifying my hair. And I wash my hair once a week because like I said, my hair is very thin and fine. I don't need to shampoo my hair as much or else it'll get really, really dry. So I just space out my shampooing and I co-wash in between. So once I'm done shampooing my hair, I rinse my hair with cool water. The directions on the shampoo say to do this, but also the other reason I use cool water instead of hot water is so that it smooths the hair, increases shine, and prevents that dry stripped feeling that I get from shampoo. The next step in my wash day routine is a protein treatment. And I don't do this every single week. Same with shampooing. I actually shampoo and I do protein treatments together. So I prefer to do this just so that the protein has a good chance of penetrating the hair shaft when it's nice and clean hair. And I know I just said I don't use protein, uh, but this is actually my first encounter with protein ever since my protein overload crisis. So it's been about a month. And I feel that now that I have restored the balance of moisture and protein in my hair, and now that I know the products I use don't have any protein in it, I feel like I have a lot better control over the protein that I put back into my hair. And the protein treatment that I personally use is the Afo-G Keratin 2 Minute Reconstructor. And I feel like I have a lot better control. And that I personally use is the, sorry, I'm trying to pause it. Not trash, but just too much, way too much. So that Afo-G 2 Minute Reconstructor is like, you just bleached your hair, you, you, you have a perm, you, you know, have really severe heat damage. That is a really, really strong protein treatment and I had no business using it. When I was, you know, transitioning, it was very helpful and my hair could take it because my hair was pretty heat damaged. But at this time, my hair was, you know, pretty much all of the um, damage was almost out of my hair. So I really didn't need this. So this ended up being too strong for my hair and I stopped using it. I forget like the progression like over the years cause this was what, like five years ago. I forget what I used right after that but I started to experiment more with different protein treatments. So yes, I don't use this anymore and I don't recommend it unless your hair is severely damaged like I said. And then going back to the shampoo, I didn't talk about any type of like conditioner but that's because at that time, as you can see, look at my hair isn't even that curly. Um, I don't really have that much tangling. So the detangling process is not that big of an issue these at that time. I didn't have to worry about having that extra step of using conditioner in my hair to really detangle it. But now conditioning is a huge part of my routine. So anyway, let's get back into the video. Afo G Keratin Two Minute Reconstructor, but basically it is a moderate protein treatment. I don't use anything that's too heavy. I don't have like chemical damage from a perm or anything. I do have heat damage, but it's not really, really bad. So basically what I do is I apply this to my hair and I focus it on my ends mainly. And I also put it like on my edges just because I have some, you know, baby hairs and like, you know, shorter hairs that are growing out in the front. And I wanna make sure that those get extra protection as well. And then I leave this on my hair for about a couple mm -hmm. minutes only needs two minutes so I'll like wash my body and then I'll uh, rinse it out 
and I also use cool water to do this as well. And the next step is to deep condition. So for deep conditioner, I currently use the Cantu Shea Butter Sulfate Free Hydrating Cream Conditioner. Basically, it's from the exact same brand and line as the shampoo that I use, so I use both of these together. Okay, so <clears throat> I think at that time I didn't know of any other deep conditioners that had no protein in them, so that's why I was using it. So for that particular um, conditioner, I use that to co-wash and I also use it to condition my hair week to week. Like after my um, shampoo, I will go over with that conditioner. I don't have it right now. I'm, I'm going to repurchase it today actually, but that is a conditioner that I use, but I don't use it as a deep conditioner anymore because I found more products to use in conjunction. And the reason why I use this conditioner rather than a, you know, legit deep conditioner is because I have yet to find a deep conditioner that doesn't have any protein in it or any of the other ingredients that I'm trying to avoid. So yeah, this is pretty much the only thing that I can find. So yeah, I use this as deep conditioner. I also use this as a co-wash in between my shampooing. I have used deep conditioner before shampooing before, but shampoo is made to remove buildup from your hair. And if you deep condition before you shampoo, you're gonna be getting rid of that deep conditioner that you just put in your hair. So now it makes more sense to just apply deep conditioner to a uh, freshly shampooed hair that is in need of moisture and the deep conditioner will, you know, just swoop in and give back the moisture to the hair. And when applying your deep conditioner, I recommend wetting your hair. Wetting the hair can raise the outer cuticle layer, which is beneficial to the conditioning process, especially for low porosity hair. And low porosity hair is basically hair that has a difficulty receiving moisture which is also the same case for protein overloaded hair that is in need of moisture. So just like the protein treatment, I apply this from ends to roots just so that I make sure that my ends get the most amount of moisture and love. And then I cover my hair with a plastic bag again and I let it sit for 30 minutes. <laughs> it takes approximately up to 30 minutes so for a conditioner to fully penetrate the hair shaft. So anything past 30 minutes isn't any more beneficial. So once it's been 30 minutes and my deep conditioner has fully penetrated my hair, I just rinse it out in the sink. You do have the option of getting back in the shower and then rinsing it out, but I don't see the point of that. I just uh, lean over the shower, lean over the sink and rinse my hair with cool water. Sealing with cold water seals the hair cuticle, allowing it to retain the moisture it received from the deep conditioner. It also creates shine and a smooth look to the hair. And I feel that this step has definitely helped to prevent my hair from feeling really dry after wash day. For so many like times I wash my hair, the next day it would be just so like dry and I would never understand that. So adding like the cold water to my regimen and making sure I constantly am using cold water to seal the moisture into my hair has definitely helped. Once my hair is completely washed and everything in condition, it's time to dry my hair. So I... Okay. So before I get to this step, so another thing that is so important for me with after wash day is sealing my hair cuticle. So I took a break from filming, like, I don't know when this video was going up, like in comparison, but I think um, a few months prior to this video, I had taken a break, like there's a bit of a lag in my video uploads. During that time, I was experimenting with a bunch of different things um, and one of them was not using apple cider vinegar anymore. So I was feeling that my hair felt kind of weird after using it. So I was just kind of like, let me stop using it and see. No. Yeah, so the reason why my hair felt weird is because my cuticles were closed and that like streaky kind of feeling means that your hair is actually, you know, locking in the moisture and your cuticles are closed. So that was a good thing. And my hair does soften up once it dries. So it doesn't feel as like streaky anymore, but that is the effect of your cuticles being closed. And that's just not a feeling I'm just not used to. So yeah, my hair just feels like more tight after, but that's what you want. You want the product to sink into your hair and to be locked in. So yes, I do the apple cider vinegar rinse, which I've shown in a couple of my videos. So if you're interested, Feel free to check out any of those videos. Maybe I'll do a dedicated video on that. I've never thought about doing that. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Let me know if you guys want to see that. But um, yeah, so I do apple cider vinegar rinse afterwards because just using cold water isn't the best way to make sure that your cuticle is closed. If you have low porosity hair, that should be enough. But if you're high porosity like me, you're going to need a little bit more to make your cuticle close. So I use apple cider vinegar personally apply a microfiber towel it's basically like one of those turby twist things 
and I use that. And then once the microfiber towel is fully loaded with water, I switch that out for a t-shirt and I dry my hair up until it's like damp. So I'd say about like an hour or two. I really don't, yeah, it doesn't take long for my hair to dry. Um, so yeah, but I do make sure that it does have some moisture still in my hair. I don't want my hair to be completely dry. So once my hair is dampened, it's not, you know, it's not dripping wet, but it's not completely dry. I moisturize and seal my hair. I feel that moisturizing and sealing my hair before my hair completely dries is so much better than waiting for my hair to dry and then moisturizing. It's almost like when you take a shower and you get out the shower, you don't want to like wait until your body is completely dry and then lotion because it's going to be so much harder to get the moisture back into your hair. So I have adopted this method and I really think it has helped my hair. So first what I do is I apply the Shea Moisture, I don't know how to say this word. I don't even want to say it. I might embarrass myself. Bow, bob. I don't know. I have it on the screen. That word. And Chi Chi Oil's low porosity, protein free leave in detangler with spearmint extract and clary sage. So basically, this is a glycerin based leave in. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't use that anymore. Conditioner, leave in detangler. I absolutely love this. This saved my hair. It's a glycerin based product. So glycerin is a humectant. So it's going to bring moisture back into the hair. And this is really good for protein overloaded hair or just dry hair in general. So yeah, I apply this to my hair and then I seal it with a shea butter moisture, <laughs> moisture mixture. Um, yeah, I only have a little bit left. I have to make some more, but basically it's just a mixture of raw African shea butter, extra virgin olive oil, sweet almond oil, Jamaican black castor oil and vitamin E oil. So I mix the girl back in the day. I used to make those DIY stuff. I've gotten out of that just cause I'm lazy, but I don't use shea butter on my hair. Shea butter is too heavy for my hair. So I don't need that, but I do use castor oil. So I do use a heavy sealant, but shea butter, I don't personally use anymore. And that used to be my thing. I used to like um, mix it all together. So yeah, that was big in the 2016 era. So yeah, I used to do that. <laughs> all together um, like with a blender type of thing like the hand blender hand mixer and I apply that to my hair I really really love it it is like a whipped shea butter so it's not too heavy if I use straight shea butter it's way too much for my hair but using it in a whipped form I don't know just makes it so much better for my hair so that's what I use to seal my hair and then I twist it up so if you're interested in my nighttime hair routine as far as how I twist out my hair um, just click the link on your screen um, and you can check out that video, but the products have... Okay, sorry, my camera cut off. I don't know what you saw last, but we just finished up my no protein, no coconut oil wash day routine. Let me resync up my screen recording. I think we'll do like one more or maybe we'll see. Let's do another one. I kind of want to watch this one. Let's do my how to wear a hat with natural hair. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Gwen and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I rock a hat with natural hair. Let's get started. The first thing I do is take down my hair. <laughs> if you're interested in my nighttime hair routine, be sure to click the link on your screen. What first, I'm going to take these large bobby pins. These are roller pins that I bought from the drugstore and I'm going to basically flatten down my hair and then pin it in place. I also use these smaller bobby pins for the front of my hair just so that it doesn't pull so much of my edges. The roller pins are a lot stronger. So I just use these around the edges and I repeat the same steps. And once you've pinned down all your hair, this is what you should have. Next, you're gonna take your hat of choice and just put it on your head. And then you're just gonna adjust the hat so that it fits your head and then it won't pop off. Next, I'm gonna hold the hat in place and pull my hair out of the hat. This is gonna make sure that my hair is laying as flat as possible. It's going to further ensure the hat is gonna stay on my head. And it's also gonna make sure that I get the maximum amount of length possible. And the last step is to fluff out my hair to create more volume. Ooh. Okay, that was really cute. I was giving volume, like up until Mm. I was giving volume for a very long time. 
I don't know. I would say up until 2020, 2019. Like now, I do give volume, but I give a little bit. My hair hangs a little bit more, but um, yeah, no, I was giving volume. Yeah, I do not pick my hair anymore. That like rips through like my single strand knots and like just like rips through my hair. So I don't do that anymore. Also, I don't wear hats that much. Um, I did use this method for when I graduated. I'll use like maybe like one clip, like right on like the crown or something, but I really didn't need it for the sides because my sides are pretty um, flat compared to the rest of my hair. But yeah, so it's funny, like in hearing the recording, I remember certain parts of editing this video that were like cringing. Like you could hear my voice stuttering or like, you know, I don't say something like, you know, in the right rhythm or something like, I don't know. I remember certain things about this video. So that's funny. But yeah, no, I don't use this method really. Like I do, but I don't use it all the time just because wearing hats just gives me a headache. And so I just really don't wear hats. I mainly wear visors. And this is the final look. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, I like this video. It's pretty popular. Um, and people still watch it. Like I still see like in my most recent like analytics, I'll see that like I have new views on that video. So people still watch this one. So yeah, that was cute. Let's do one more. I feel like I want to do another one. I want to watch like older ones. So let's newest to oldest. We're going to get into some of the videos that like I used to make that were not with natural hair. Should we watch one of those? Should. Oh, the ride or die makeup tag. Oh my god. Okay, no, I want to watch this one. Let's watch this one. This is my nighttime hair routine, short, medium, natural hair. I really like this video. I got a lot of views on it. All I needed to do to be tangled. This video is too precious. I cannot. Okay, so I saw a lot in this video already that I'm just like, oh. First of all, my hair was so short. Second of all, look at my curl pattern. Like I had no, I had like no curl pattern. This was very early in my um, my transitioning journey. So yes. Um, we had that going on. Also, I don't use curl enhancing smoothie anymore and I don't use that shea butter. I know that was like a coconut oil kind of shea butter type of thing. I think it was like a coconut oil mixture. I don't use that anymore. It was all melted. Um, and yeah, I do still finger detangle. I just love how I was like making a big deal about like, you know, I mean, you, you should be that gentle with your hair, but I think if I had the experience that I have with my hair now with that length of hair I would definitely be like running through this like I don't think I would have slowed down that much because my ends just don't look that um tangled up but um yeah that's interesting and the helpful tip 
yeah, I used to have a different channel name. So if you were from the Healthful Beauty days, shout out to you. Um, but yeah, I used to have the Healthful Tip. Finger detangle. All right, let's keep let's keep going. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What just happened? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a lot. Okay, so one thing about it though, a twist out with some flex around at the end was the way to get my curls to look more defined. When you transition, it's important to find a hairstyle that helps to make your hair look its best and blend your different textures. Um, another thing I would have done here is definitely not go in and pick my hair. I would have gone in at the roots to separate the hair to really make sure that it lays well. Also, I would not have flat um, flexi rod it so high, like flexi rod all the way up, because that um, makes your hair more shrunken and gives you less length. So I probably would have just done it on the ends with like a smaller flexi rod just so that I can get that volume um and also to well the volume is fine but also to get um like the most amount of length possible so that's something i would have done also just looking back i don't think that i would have worn my hair in this style um yeah i have a biased opinion now that i have longer hair so i can do a little bit more with my hair at the time i think i should have possibly like pinned it back somehow or like you know did something to give it a little more dimension. Like I kind of wish looking back, I could go in there and like, you know, you know, like twist the front, you know, or add like some type of like, you know, like, I don't know, something. Anyway, cute video nonetheless. <laughs> Okay, you guys, I think that's the end of this video. I had a fun time running down memory lane, taking a trip down memory lane. Um, so yeah, <laughs> this was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you see the growth in me. I don't know, maybe I need to go to some of like the old methods, I don't know. But yeah, no, so it's definitely good to see where you came from. Remember, I remember when I used to not be able to put a, um, a flexi rod around the back of my hair because it was so short like I remember I could like only use like a roller like I couldn't even use a flexi rod and now you know my hair you know my twists are always so long so always remember where you came from always remember the journey and you know just know that you know life's a journey don't you know I don't know what I'm trying to say I don't know I think it's like a good um life lesson for just you know life in general you know
remember, remember where you came from and, you know, acknowledge the growth. That's the end of this video. Thanks for hanging out with me today, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Also, be sure to turn on all your notifications and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Gwen. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.